Good evening, young people. Good evening, young people. I heard louder voices on the sports field today. Eh? We're all well. Yeah, I think we're all well. Eh? I think that we're having a wonderful time at this camp. And during this camp, I've just been thinking about how God's love is so good. You know, the love of man the love of this world for you to get it you have to work for it it doesn't come free hey, but the love of God it blows our minds we do not understand the love of God that God the creator of heaven and earth a holy God a pure God would come and choose a person like me. A person like me would sin and choose me and say, I want to use you. In, in the book of Jeremiah, it gives a wonderful picture. God tells Jeremiah to go to the potter's house to see how the potter works. And you know when this potter gets this piece of clay it's not worth much. There's nothing valuable in this guy's hands. And likewise with me when God chose me, I was just an ordinary guy. I had nothing special to give to the Lord. I did not deserve the salvation of the Lord. But the Lord chose me. The Lord chose you. Chose you. And in his hands, he makes us into a beautiful vessel. Maybe someone has told you that you are useless. But in God's hands, he be useful for his kingdom. I told you that you do not matter. But in God's hands, you matter. I matter. Say to your partner that I matter. Say you matter. Because God has got a special plan for me. And we have seen how the Lord has saved us. We have seen how the Lord is setting us free from sin. But salvation is only the beginning. Now the Lord wants to make us into a vessel. A pure vessel. Hey, a pure vessel. That will represent him here on earth. A pure vessel. And all he's asking for. That will represent him here on earth. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our works. All he's asking for is a heart that says, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He doesn't need our works. He doesn't need our works. All he's asking for is a heart that says, yes, Lord. Make me what you want to make me. And tonight I want to ask you, do you want to say yes to the Lord? If you want to say yes to the Lord, let's stand. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to come into the service this evening. That will allow the Holy Spirit to take its place. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time that we've had so far. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us. Thank you, Lord, that you're beginning to set us free from sin. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful miracle that you're doing in our lives. And Lord, tonight we want to come with a heart of gratitude. To say thank you, Lord. We do not deserve your mercy. We do not deserve your grace. But you chose us. And Father, this evening, we want to say yes to your ways. We want to say yes to your plans. Because love, your love is greater than what any man or woman can give us. Than what anything of this world can give us. And Father, we want to say yes to you and answer your call. So Father, I want to worship you and have a heart of gratitude this In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, let's thank the Lord and worship Him. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley. Everyone in the valley. Shout! 
Amen. Amen or not? Amen. Let me see all those who come from Tanzania. So we are going to sing a Swahili song. Amen. And we, we've asked uh, our sister from uh, Tanzania to come and... What's her name? Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> they must all come. All the Tanzanians, come. Come. Sarah. If you are coming from all the Swahili, Swahili speaking. Tanzania. Tanzania, come. Where are they? Ah, oh, only two. <laughs> They're going to sing us a Swahili song. So we are going to sing a song called Unaweza. You are able. You are able, Jesus. Hallelujah.
you are. Hamanati, oh, Hamanati, oh, Hamanati, siabo, oh, Hamanati, oh, Hamanati, oh, Hamanati, oh, Hamanati, siabo, 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 siabo.
chosen us to be here tonight, Lord. It's your grace, Lord. It's your grace. We know, Lord, we could be elsewhere, maybe in sin, maybe not saved. For some, even, Lord, tonight, they are, they are newly born. They can say thank you, Lord. They can say thank you. But there's much, Lord, you want to do in their lives. There's much, Lord, you want to accomplish, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. I want us to sing a song. It, say, it speaks of the faithfulness of the Lord. Huh? That he's, he's, he's creating in us a testimony. A testimony which is a fruit of the gospel. Uh, how he has sealed each one of us by the Holy Spirit to belong to him. To be set apart completely for him and his purposes. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are for there's no one else like you who is faithful and but true oh my life my life my life is a test 
Only you are holy, Lord. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Wonderful. Only you are wonderful. There is no one else. For this no tonight that's exactly what it is you are holy and you are worthy and there's not a person here Lord that you do not know by name the Bible says that you knew us before we were born what an incredible thing that you know us you watched over us and Father in your heart, you have a plan for every one of us. 
What an amazing God we serve. And may that plan come to pass tonight, Father. And may every young person here today feel and understand that they have not been left behind, but that you love us and you care for us. We thank you, Lord. And bless your name. Amen. You may be seated. Right, we need to move this lot right back. So, good evening, everyone. We are going to change the meeting tonight a little bit. I am going to share the gospel with you using visual aid. I'm going to try and make it as clear for you as possible. I want to do it so that you never, ever forget what you see tonight. Amen. Amen. I've never done it like this before. And I hope it works. But if it doesn't, you're going to have fun anyway. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go through various stages. We're going to start off with the right in the very beginning. And we will go through step by step all the things we need to understand and how God's grace works for our lives. So first of all tonight, I want, we've got some volunteers here. They volunteered because we chose them. So where's, where's my first, where's Josh? Is it Josh? Yeah, come here, Josh. Josh now, Ngulapa. Now, yeah, you can come and stand down here, Josh. Okay. Who's the man? Josh. Joe Dash. That's it. Joe Dash. Now, I'm going to read you a verse, and then we're going to turn out the lights, and I'm going to explain something. This is what it said in the book of Genesis. For God knows, this is what the devil said to Adam, to Eve. For God knows that in the day you eat of the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Right, can I have the lights, please? So in the beginning, Adam was in perfect fellowship with God. There we are. Don't get blinded by the presence of God there, but anyway. The, there, was no, there was no disconnect between Jordash and God. Adam's second name was Jordash. So there we go. But when the devil came and spoke to them in the Garden of Eden, he said something very interesting. Because he, when God said, don't touch the fruit, it wasn't the fruit that was the problem. It was the act of rebellion against God that was the problem. And so the devil said, come on, rebel against God. Just rebel against God. And then he warned him. Because he said to Adam, you'll be just like me. You will know the difference between good and evil and you'll be like God. You see, somebody who's like God is living his life independent of God. Because he doesn't want, he doesn't need God. So Adam, that's what devil said. Eat that fruit. 
and you'll discover you don't need God. You can live a life independent of God. And so Adam ate the fruit. And this is what happened. <laughs> Adam became rebellious. <laughs> Adam felt that he could do what he wanted. Adam became a master of his own destiny. Adam didn't realize he'd become a full sinner. <laughs> Poor old Adam. All right, let's have the lights back. Now I want the, uh, my other two volunteers. And I want you to jump up on the platform here. So the first thing that happened is that man began to believe that they could live their lives independent of God. And that's every one of us that's born. We are born with a little character inside us that wants to be rebellious. We want to live our lives our way. Don't tell me what to do. I want to do it the way I like. True story? True story. All the way to the back there. Can you hear me? Half a true story here, real true story there, right? Now, this is what happens. Listen to the scripture here. The Bible says, and the, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that do not believe. I need my three demons, please. Here they come. Oh, what handsome fellows. Look at these demons. Straight from the pit of hell. You see, what we don't see and understand is that the spirit world is very real. Demons are real. Angels are real. But a sinner has no way of discerning what a demon is. So jump up here, you evil boys. And it says, the God of this world blinds the eyes of them that do not believe. Take off your, your glasses, Jodash. We need, a, we need a, a banner here. Take off your banner. You got a banner? Can someone lend me a, a, a banner? You're blind him. No, yours. You're going to blind yourself. <laughs> Here we go. There we are. Jordash is all done now. Now, the problem with being blind is you can't see where you're going. A blind man can walk down the road. He can't see the dog that's about to bite him. He can't see the ditch. He can't see any danger. But he thinks he's fine with his little stick. He's walking down there. He can't see the snake. He can't, he, he can't see anything there. Because he's gone blind. And when the Bible says the God of this world blinds the minds of them that believe not, it means you can't see the danger of sin anymore. Sin is no longer seen to be wrong. Sin looks fine. And so along come these spirits and they blind your mind. And then they whisper in your ears. And look here. We see no problem with drugs. I chose these demons for what they, they do kind of naturally. Come along here. No problem with lust. Where's this other one? Oh, he's a thief. No problem with theft. I say it's okay. It's normal. That's how people work. Huh? Look at that girl. Just a little more last. Huh? Drugs. Just try that little draw. Just smoke it a bit more. Ah, just perfect. 
You can't feel the impact. You're going to be okay. And we're so blind. We say, who's going to help me? Where am I going? Help me, help me. We think we are safe. But we have a friend who's right behind us and he's guiding us in this road of blindness. But it gets worse. Look at the next verse here. It says, don't you know that to whom you yield yourselves slaves to obey? His slaves you are whom you choose to obey. Oh my goodness. So long come these evil spirits and now they're going to tie up these poor boys. This is part of the problem with sin. Once we start, we become a slave to it. Now these boys, they can't change their lives. They can't get out of it. Not only are they now a slave to sin, where are these wicked demons? Where's your whip? You got a whip? There we are. Now, they're they making them go more, go more, go further. Get one sin leads to another sin. One bad little sin leads to a big one and a bigger one. Look at that. There they are. What fun these demons are having with these poor little sinners. But that could be you. That could be your life right now. Sin has become your master. And there's some dark creature making sure that you are going to stay that way. Who wants to opt for this little character here? Don't we have volunteers? Can I have an altar call for ones who want to be slaves of sin? It's not going to work. You don't want to be like that, do you? But that's the reality of every sinner. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Satan makes sure that he pays you a salary. He will make sure that if you borrow his sin, he will pay you a salary. And that salary is he wants to destroy your life. Amen. Amen. All right. So now, demons, you can just exit with your poor little victims and go stand over there for a moment. And you can undo the, the blindfold because they will fall down the hole. Yeah, well, Jodesh, you've got to see clearly, boy. <laughs> because you came to the youth camp, now you can see properly. Amen. Amen. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Right. Now I want to speak. The next thing I want to show you. It's what Jesus did on the cross so that it doesn't have to be like that. So I need, I need my cross and I need that little gas cylinder here, please. And Noah, can a couple of these guys pull this carpet over there? Okay, let's put this boy down. And I'm going to show you what hell looks like. Pull it right away. We're going to put this boy right there. Do you believe that God judges sin? Is hell warming up here? Yeah, it's warming up, huh? There we go. It's got to go nice and red. Yeah, it's warming up. You don't, there's, it's, there's never winter in hell. If you struggle with winter, go to hell. You'll find it's where your problem is solved. There we are. This, the hell was made for the devil and his angels, the Bible says. 
It is not God's plan that anybody would ever go there. Amen. Amen. But all men who die as sinners, that is where they go. A sinner is going, here's a little guy. His little heart is corrupted by sin. He's never repented. He has no idea what it means to serve the Lord. So what happens when he dies? He is going to find himself having a little visit to a little place he doesn't want to go. I'm going to have to make it possible for him to squeeze through the bars here. There we go. You can say, that's me if you're careful. There we go. He dies. He dies and then one day as he dies, he finds himself in a place of judgment. It's super. Now, in real terms, we don't actually burn in hell. We just suffer. But I wanted you to see what happens. It says the flame never goes out. Ever goes out. You're separated from God forever and ever and ever. I don't want to burn down the, the thing here. So this is what Jesus did. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, for the wrath of God, the wrath of God has been revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Meaning that God judges those who mock him. Those sinners that want to live for themselves, they cannot go to heaven. God is holy. He cannot let that which is unholy into his presence. He does not let religious people into heaven. He does not let people that have done good works into heaven. Because they are all corrupted by sin. But something happened. When Jesus died on the cross, um, yeah, Jordan, just come here. I just want you to hold that without going up in flames. Can you hold it there? Come on. Another volunteer. Come. You hold that side. And you hold that side. There we go. Now this is what happened. <clears throat> when Jesus died on the cross, he took the wrath of God for you and for me. That's why I put the cross in front of the heat. The Bible says that God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. That is the depth of God's love for you. Not one person in this room needs to go to hell. Jesus, Jesus came and stood in your presence. He bore the wrath of God. So that when we come to the cross, there's no fire. When we come to the cross, there's no judgment. But the man who doesn't see the need of the cross, two guys, this one on the cross, this guy having a good time, this one's going to find himself in the heat, this one finds himself in the grace of God. Who do you want to be? Jesus bore the wrath of God that we might not bear it for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Now I want to show you what I want to show you one more thing that Jesus did. It says in the Bible that Jesus took these. Oh, I need a piece of paper here. I thought I had one. You got a little piece of paper? 
Okay, building nine. There we go. That'll be great. The Bible says this. It says that he took the sum total of our sins. And he nailed it to the cross. In the day when that, when that scripture was written, if a man went to jail, they took, they took his, his crime and they put it on a piece of paper and they nailed it on the door. And it would say, chicken thief, chicken thief, you got three months of jail. And after three months, they would come and score off each month. Then they would give him the piece of paper and he would say, I am a thief, I'm a free thief, I paid the price. But God has, God has a list of your sins, every one of you. And if you end up going to hell, that's the list that will send you there. But Bible says that when Jesus took you on the cross, he took your list to that cross. When we come and when we come here to kneel at the butt, at the foot of the cross and ask him for forgiveness, he takes that list and he says, "It has gone forever." Amen. Amen. Gone. Forever. Never underestimate the power of the death of Jesus to save you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, thanks, guys. You can sit down for a second. I need two chairs. Can I have two black chairs? And I need two, two young men. One chair there. Another chair. Another chair here. Right. I'm going to talk on true repentance. True repentance. The Bible says there's a difference between real repentance and false repentance. False repentance is called remorse. It means saying sorry when you don't mean it. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to tell you a story of two boys. Some of you know my story. Now, two boys in two different towns. But with the same problem. They both live in a house where the neighbor has a great big fruit tree. And that neighbor is an evil, cruel old man. He won't let those boys touch that fruit. And so both boys make a plan. The neighbor goes away to town on Saturday. And as they are proper boys, they know that he's not coming back for at least four hours. Amen. Amen. So up the tree goes the first boy. And as he's climbing the tree, he's up the tree, the old man comes home. And he's standing at the bottom of the tree with the biggest shambok you've ever seen. And he's aiming at that boy's bum. Now what does happen to this boy when he sees the old man about there? What would you say? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go on. What are you going to say? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Look, look. You can see he's done it before. Now, sorry for what? 
Sorry for being caught. Sorry for this. But not sorry for the fruit. That's a cheap sorry. That means if I say sorry, I'll miss the problem. But it does not change his heart. Because he'll go back the next day and do the same thing. Amen. Let's have the next boy here. He climbs a tree. And the old man doesn't come home. And he fills his fruit, his pockets with the fruit. Look, he's even got a back, he's still got a backpack on this guy. He knows what he's doing. Now he goes home. And he's eating his fruit in his house. And then God speaks to him. What are you doing? Now he realizes he's stolen the fruit. What is he going to do? He has to go back and knock on the door of that grumpy old man. Knock on the door. What do you want? I came to apologize. For what? Huh? What do you say? I stole your fruits, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I stole your fruits. He is willing to repent even if he gets a hiding. You see, true repentance means he accepts responsibility for what he did. Amen. Amen. True repentance means, Lord, I am a sinner. I do take drugs. I do live in immorality. I do steal. I, I do lie. I am a sinner. True repentance means that's who I am. I am not hiding it anymore. Amen. Amen. I'm coming, Lord Jesus, because I need your forgiveness. True repentance acknowledges who you really are. Amen. Amen. So now, this young man, of our three men here, we have three different kinds. We have this young man who came to youth camp and he got born again. This young man came to youth camp and he only pretended to get saved. And this young man came to youth camp and he left thinking it was one great big party. Three men with three different hearts. Just like there are three different kinds of people here today. One got truly born again. One didn't. At all. And one was pretending. Just so that he thinks if he made a prayer, God would like him and he could go home. But he never changed his heart. Now I want to show you something. I just want to remove these chairs. All three men... All three men are going to die. Just don't die just yet. All three men are going to die. Look here. I hope this thing is hot enough to do this. Ah, there we go. In fact, I'm going to put it here just for safety. Hell is down below. You realize that, huh? Mm. I had an angel somewhere. Where did my angel go? Huh? Here comes my angel. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if I had an angel like you, I'd be safe. That's for sure. <laughs> now, I want to show you something. What happens, what happens when you die? So, you guys, I want you to die on the platform so the guys can see. 
You know, they, they, they got a bit older, one had an overdose, whatever it was, but they died. The, the mothers cried, whatever it is, anyway, they gone. Now this is what happens when you die. Baba says you've got three parts to your body, your soul, and your spirit. And your body is just your outside. But the real you is your soul and your spirit. So when you die, your spirit and your soul are together. They come out of your body. So for the, for the guy who was righteous, the angel came to meet him. And you can take the soul out of the body. It, just, it's down there somewhere. There we go. Not a very big one, but this one here. It's, it was a sinner, now he's a saint. The angels got his soul. And you may, you may take it up there to the presence of God. Now these two guys have a problem. Come on, two of you. One take out the soul there. You take out the soul there. Look inside. Oh my goodness. The body is there, but who's got the soul? The spirit is going to make sure that that soul is going to accompany it to its new place. You may, you may introduce your soul, gentlemen, to its new home. Look, how much fun they have introducing your little soul to its new home. You see, eternity is a long time. When you die, you can't change your state. You will die exactly as you are. And if you are unrighteous, you can't say sorry after that. Ooh, that thing is hot. Hell is not a pleasant place. And you can't get out of your body and see a demon and say, whoa, 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 let's negotiate now. Let's talk about it. No ways, you got the wrong address here, buddy. We love, whoa, 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 whoa. You are gone. Because you lived in rebellion to God all your life and you denied the grace of God from the cross and you chose an eternal destiny that was your choice and that's where you will go. Salvation is serious stuff. Amen. Amen. Serving Amen. God is serious stuff. It's life and death. You're not playing with little things. You're playing with your very life. Okay, gentlemen, you can rise from the dead. Turn that thing off. Let's put an end to hell. Well done. We managed to do that and not burn the house down. Now, I need my umbrella. Now, I want to show you what happens. Once we get born again, and we become a Christian, okay, you can take drugs off. Demons don't get born again, but this one did. Okay, I want you to hold my umbrella. I chose the umbrella because I want to show you the security we have in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that when we become a Christian, we become adopted into the family of God. That is a very, very powerful statement. What it means is this. Back in Roman times, there would be a rich Roman businessman 
Then he only have daughters and not sons. So he had no one to leave his business to. So he would go and look for a young man in a poor family. And then he would negotiate with that family. And say, I wish to give your son a future. I want to adopt him. And the family would release the boy. When they released him, he changed his name. His father lost his son. But the businessman gained a son. He came into the businessman's home as his own son. He took on his name. And it could not be reversed. He now belonged to the businessman who was going to take care of him and train him and prepare him to inherit the business. Nice story, isn't it? And that's what Jesus did. He took us away from the, our earth, our dark father, the devil. And he adopted us. And he changed our name. And he gave us his name. And he put us in his family. And he is preparing us for the work that he has for us in the future. Jump up here. Where's my... Where's, where's my yeah, I, thank you. No, I, need the, I need the born again Christian. Doresh. This is now our young Christian. He has a covenant with God. He's been adopted by the Lord. Drop that thing right down. Drop it down. Drop it. Can you see that he's under the protection of the umbrella? Come on, you demons. Come up here. These guys, they never leave me alone. Now, these guys cannot touch him. I want you to understand that. Once he is washed in the blood of Jesus, come on you spirits, walk around here. They cannot put their hands on a child of God. Did you hear me? They cannot put their hands on a child of God. Oh, they would like to. But he is separated by the blood of Jesus. They can lie to him. They can tell him what they like. He is safe under that covenant. Amen. Amen. Now here's the problem. Jodash decides he's just going to try sin one more time. Step out of there. Now, now these guys are going to have a go at him. He belongs to Jesus, but they're going to give him a hard time. That's what happens when we mess with sin. Now Jodash cried to God and repent. And the moment he does that, he's back underneath the umbrella. And I'll lend these guys my handkerchief because they're crying the tears now. That is the reality of our salvation. That is the security we have in Jesus Christ. We start off as men who are living and women living in independence to God. Bound, blind. Jesus took all our sin upon himself at the cross. When we are willing to come to true repentance, kneel at the foot of that cross, 
The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all our sins. God will remove the remembrance of all that we have done. Every chain will be broken. And we are adopted into the family of God forever and ever and ever. And those bad boys that were giving us a hard time cannot touch us anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you like my pictures? Are you going to remember them? Because now it is time to apply them. Amen, gentlemen. You may sit down. Now it is time to get serious. Tonight I've given you the gospel in picture form. But now what about you? When again? Noah, do you want to come up here? No one has a rapambi. There are some of you here tonight. You are oppressed with the, demonic dreams. The, the banjoe, spirits. Imimoya. Tormented. I want you to know the moment that you become a Christian, that thing cannot touch you anymore. Some of you are bound by lusts. Your background, you've grown up in that environment. And you think, is it possible for me to change? The grace of God is more powerful than any way you were raised. Tonight, I want to show you the power of God's grace. Here it is. The power of God's love. Every one of you, he knows you by name. Every one of you, he took his, your name to the cross. Every one of you. The moment you come to the base of the cross, in true repentance, God will write his law upon your heart. He give you his name and call you his son and his daughter. The new birth is a miracle completely changes the character of a human being. And that is available to us tonight. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Do you want to pick it up from there? Father, we thank you this evening. Thank you for the miracle of salvation that's coming to many hearts this evening. Thank you for the deliverance that's coming tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for the fear of God that's coming to many hearts tonight. How you are breaking many chains of the enemy tonight. And freedom is coming to many hearts tonight. Oh, God, you're doing miracles tonight. Doing Serious miracles tonight. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Just before we worship the Lord tonight, is that we want to pray for those who need to genuinely be born again. As you saw the, the, the pastor giving the illustration, that Jesus paid the price for you. He has faced the wrath of God on that cross. So that you don't feel that wrath anymore. True salvation is when you know the depth of God's forgiveness for your sin. It doesn't matter what you've done. 
It doesn't matter when you did it. But you know that Jesus died on the cross for you. And you feel that I've been forgiven. I don't have to suffer anymore. And that God is not angry at you. He loves you. He saw the prison you're in. He saw the sin you're in. And he made a plan. He sent Jesus for you. So that you don't have to suffer anymore. The cross is the forgiveness of God for you. And today you can hide by the cross. It's serious business tonight. Where you know in the depth of your heart the forgiveness of God. Maybe you've been running away from God. But tonight you can be real with God and run to the forgiveness of God because Jesus has died for you. You don't have to remain in sin anymore. You don't have to remain where you are. Jesus died on the cross for you. So where are you? Raise your hand real quick. Come to the front real quick. You know that you. That Jesus died on the cross. And you know tonight is your night. To experience the forgiveness of God. Oh, come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The forgiveness of God is coming to your house tonight. The forgiveness of God is coming to your house tonight. Oh, the forgiveness of God is so real, brothers and sisters. Where you know I'm no longer hated and judged by God. You live here free with the testimony that Jesus died for me. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. That's your testimony tonight. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe they can. Maybe you've come the previous day and you came this morning and you're not still not sure but God can do a real miracle where you know that you know that you know that I am saved. Hey, forgiveness. You walk freely to know that Jesus paid the price. Say, yes, I was in fornication. Yes, I was this. But I'm forgiven. And the true mark of forgiveness as well is that you don't go back to it. There is such a gratitude. You know when he met that woman in adultery? She was in sin. Jesus said, go and sin no more. The love of God sets you free from sin. It sets you free from sin. And tonight that's what the love of God is going to do. Set you free from sin. I just believe there's some people here tonight that you've got some charms on you that were given to you by your family that you're using for protection from bad spirits. You've heard the gospel, you want to be free but you also need to remove those things. I know there's one young lady here tonight who somehow your family has told you that the ancestors are calling you. They say you are gifted because somehow you dream dreams and you can interpret things. But the Lord says that's not of me. Tonight, come and I set you free. There's, there's even some people here, you wear certain colors and you don't want to wear certain colors on your clothing. Because you feel if, if you wear this color, it will bring you bad luck. 
But the Lord says that is bondage, come and I set you free. There's some you fear your family. As you've heard the gospel tonight, there's fear in your heart. Because you know the things that you practice. And you know it's wrong. But it's become a family thing. And, and they're okay with you coming to church. As long as you continue in this culture in this way. But tonight, do not be ashamed. Because God's power can set you free. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We want to pray for you individually tonight. And I'm really going to ask the elders that we take time to the elders, the deacons, the deaconesses, the elders' wives, the responsibles. We want to pray for these people right now and to trust God for a miracle. And then we're going to pray for the others as well. But we are trusting God for miracles tonight. It is so special and important tonight. I'm going to pray for you now. And then there are going to come people to pray with you. And then after that you will go to the counseling tent. But we are trusting God for a real miracle tonight. That you leave this place with an assurity of the love of God in your heart. Father tonight. I pray for every heart here. I pray for everyone who's come to the front, who's given their life to you. Do a miracle tonight. Oh Lord, do a miracle. Let the enemy no longer lie to them. Let the enemy no longer confuse them. Let them live here with an assurance of the love of God. As they pray tonight, let chains be broken. Let healing come. Let freedom come. Flood their hearts with your love tonight. Let them know that they are forgiven. Oh, wash them in your blood right now. Wash them right now. All that condemnation, all that guilt, all that those thoughts that have held them captive right now let them be free in the name of Jesus free in the name of Jesus let your Lordship come right now right now Lord let forgiveness come now in the name of Jesus we thank you Jesus hallelujah So can I please ask the elders and the wives and the deacons to please let's pray for these wonderful people. Please can we come and really give a moment and pray for them. Amen. Bring me back to the place where I'd love the cross. Bring me back to the place where I'm on my knees. Bring me back to an undivided heart. Bring me back to you. Bring me back, bring me back. Bring me back to the place where I love the cross. Bring me back.
bring me back to you where i belong where i belong where i belong is a trophy
We thank you, Jesus. We really want to pray for some people tonight. Is that tonight is your chance to be set free? Is that maybe you're here tonight? And you've heard what our brother said. Is that maybe in your family there are charms? Charms. Maybe in your family you've gone to witch doctors. Maybe you see dreams. We are born All of those things. You can only be set free if you come under the umbrella. Maybe you've done things. Maybe you've gone to places. But you can only be set free if you come under the umbrella. You cannot ask God for protection unless you surrender your life to Him. And tonight, we are giving you an opportunity to run under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, to turn your back on your upbringing, to turn your back on many things of your culture to turn your back on sin you've been doing and to come under the umbrella of Jesus and the enemy will have no say in your life you know the torment you're under you know the fear you're under but tonight you don't have to remain there freedom comes freedom comes when you submit to Jesus and tonight come and give your heart to Jesus come and hide under that umbrella and he will protect you because you've given him your life you come you come you know yourselves you know what you're going through you know the fear in your life you know the places you've been but tonight is your night for freedom to come and it only comes in submission to Jesus so if that you come to the front now if that you come You mean business with God. Come. You're submitting your heart to Jesus. That's where freedom comes. It's not a magic prayer. It's changing from one authority to another authority. If that's you tonight, come. Where you don't have to fear when you go to bed anymore. We thank you, Jesus. Maybe you've had words spoken over your life from which doctors you don't have to remain under the bondage of those words what your heart and your life is under the authority of Jesus you don't need anything more come to Jesus this is a serious moment where Jesus is becoming the authority in your life. We thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask the elders to come and please pray for these wonderful brothers and sisters.
what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is ever. I praise God. What he's done. What he's done. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, oh praise God, oh, one more time. God for what he's done. We can praise him for what he's doing. And we can praise him for what he's yet to do. Amen. 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 You are in the right place, my brother, my sister. I'm in the right place. There's no other place we could have been this weekend. But to be here in Shalom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.